I want to tell you a story about how five years ago, I sat down in my living room, didn't move, and came up with going from zero money in voiceover to over six figures. So I started my voiceover business about six years ago, and for the first nine, ten months, I was kind of piddling around, doing whatever I could to get a job here or there, just basically, you know, auditioning on ACX. And uh, come summer of 2018, my family and I, we went to Alaska for vacation. My mother lives out there. And, you know, I had opened uh, an account on Fiverr and I had gotten a job here or there, but uh, wasn't getting a lot of work. So I put my account on pause and left for Alaska with my family for about two weeks. It was a great trip. But when we got back, I turned all my stuff back on and I was making zero dollars, nothing. <laughs> I made no money. I couldn't get any work. Well, I had been looking at this business as a way to you know, change my life and get out of something that I didn't want to do anymore. So I was very frustrated about not making money. I decided to take my laptop, lay down in the middle of my floor in my living room, and I told myself I was not going to move literally until I figured out how to get voiceover work. And this is what I did. I started by going to Fiverr and making test gigs. Basically, what I did was I took keywords that people were searching for and I created gigs around them and I tried to see who was clicking on them. Then I changed my thumbnails and I was trying to see who was clicking on them. Uh, and that summer, I realized a really important thing that you got to get people to click on your work in order for them to purchase from you. OK, from keywords to your thumbnails to your offerings, everything in there is vital to your success. Filling everything out was so important. And then I realized the amount of gigs I had up was also really important. I had to put up those gigs. Now I'm thinking to myself, OK, maybe there's something to this. OK, I figuring out that I need to have stuff that's clickable. I need to have a picture that people are going to click on. Not just any picture, but a picture people are going to click on. I need to make sure that I have all the information put up on these gigs, meaning like they're filled out to their fullest. Everything that the platform Fiverr says I can fill out, I'm going to fill out. The, the third thing is, is to make sure that every piece of audio and portfolio work that I can put up there, whether I've done it or not, I create it and I've put it up there. Also, that I need to make sure that all of the gigs that they allow you to put up, I put up. Okay, so I had these seven gigs up. So all of a sudden, I started getting work. People were clicking on my stuff. People were messaging me. People were asking me to do work. I, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is great. Wait a minute. Maybe there's something more to this. OK, so then I'm like, OK, well, if one thing works here, maybe it's going to work somewhere else. So then I go to Upwork. Then I go back to ACX. Then I go to People Per Hour. Then I go to um, Voquin. Then I go to uh, uh, Voices.com and Voice123 and Bunny Studios and all these different places, all these platforms. And I realized the same formula worked for all these places. But here's the kicker. The secret sauce to all of this and how I blew this up was putting them everywhere. So that summer, I did nothing but put myself every possible place I could go, put up as many different gigs, projects, offerings, whatever I could put up everywhere I could put up as much as the platform would let me to the point where they would say, hey, please don't put anything up more. We know you exist. Please stop. You don't need to put anything more up on our website. Okay, That was key. Putting up yourself, your pictures, your profile, your audio everywhere and as much as you can. And if you don't have it made, you have to make it. 
You've got to make more demos. You've got to make more portfolio work. You've got to make it first. You gotta, you gotta create it if you haven't been hired to do it first. It's just like anything else. You gotta create a product before people are gonna buy it. So you've got to create this and you gotta put it up everywhere. All right. At least 10, five, like 10 platforms you need to have those platforms filled out to their fullest until they allow you not to put anything else. And if they keep letting you put it up, you keep putting them up. Okay. I did that. That was the first thing. Next thing I realized was, okay, I've got this stuff up. This is like a passive approach. People are, you know, messaging me, messaging me, but I want to, I want to even dial it up even more. So then what I started doing was auditioning. Okay. At least 10 to 20 times a day. I would do this. I started with ACX. All right. I added this on. This was like my 10 X idea. You know, I was like, once for all, I'm going to freaking do this. Right. And go full time. Um, and, and, and I needed to make over the six figure mark. Okay. Um, but I wasn't bringing in any money at all. So I was like, okay, on top of getting all that stuff everywhere, now I need audition. So what I did was, is I started auditioning 10 to 20 times a day on multiple platforms. Okay. I would do it first to start on ACX. And what I found was every 10 to 12 auditions I was doing, I was getting a book. I was getting a book. And then I realized, man, that was too cumbersome with the books, right? Because I started having six, seven books in the queue. And then I started realizing putting my my audiobook services on places like five and other places, that was starting to generate work. And then I was having, you know, four or five books in the queue there. And I was just all this work was piling up. Okay. Um, and as that started happening, all right, I realized, well, I want to go audition other places to get other work that was going to pay me more for less, right? Important point here. You've got to make sure that you are also auditioning for higher paid work as well as a lower paying work. Audition for it all. Get it all. Don't don't just throw one away for another one. Get it all. You've got to get all the get it all. Get all the work. That's just my thought with that. All right. And that's what I was doing, okay, with 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 the auditioning from back and forth for those different projects, not just audiobooks. Okay, so I was auditioning, 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 making sure that I was doing 10 to 20 a day. And then I realized something. I realized that it was a lot like a roller coaster. All right. So imagine that you are going up, right, a roller coaster. We've all been there. Like I'm, I'm next to this place called Bush Gardens in, in Williamsburg, Virginia. Um, and but whether you've been to Disney World or, or wherever, any, any, you know, Six Flags or any, any depending, you know, uh, wherever you are, the theme park, you know, on a roller coaster, you go up, you go up, you know, it's that slow rise, right? You're going up the hill, you're going up the hill. And as you're rising up the hill, all right, you get to the top. Okay. Then once you turn over, man, you speed up and you zoom past and you're going down, man, it's amazing. Okay. You're going super fast. Things are happening. But as you go back down, all of that, um, uh, all of that uh, effort, momentum that's behind you, all right, it begins to slow down, all right? It's fast, it's amazing, life is great, but then it slows down. And in order for you to get that momentum again, you have to go back up, all right, the climb. Now, what I realized was, was that in order to get this income and keep it, right, and continue to grow it, right, over a sustained time, over the year, all right, I needed to find a way to get out of the roller coaster, right? Get out of this hard, slow climb and then super fast and then nothing. And then you got to go back up the slow climb, super fast and then nothing, slow climb, right? I, I, so what I realized was is that I needed to split my time effectively through the auditioning and the work phase so that I made sure that no matter how much work I had or what was on my plate, there was a set of things that I did every single day, no matter what. And that included, I made sure that I had those auditions every day, that I sent those proposals every day, no matter how many books I had in the queue, how many commercials I had in the queue, how much work was coming in, I had to maintain that set of level of auditioning and communication with clients. So important. And what that did was it changed my whole business because then there was no longer was I on this roller coaster, but I maintained this level. And in fact, it kept rising. All right. And, you know, that's something then you but then you'll get to a point where you realize there's too much work. <laughs> for you. It's a good problem to have. 
All right. But here's the thing. After all of that, it is quite a climb and a grind. So I was doing all this. I was uh, the money was coming. I'm like, oh, my God, my life ch changed literally in one summer forever. The next summer, I was able to quit my job and go full time. It was making more money than I ever made in my entire life. And I realized something. And that's the last part of this, that in order to maintain all of this, all right, in order to maintain all of this, I had to make sure that I was staying in constant contact with the clients that I was getting, with the people who were interested in working with me or who had worked with me. It was funny, you know, from that summer where I was on the floor, you know, and I was so determined to get business, right? I'll never forget the light bulb that went off in my head in realizing that in the end, all of this work, remember, once you get those clients and you do all of this stuff to maintain that rise, you need to keep communicating with them. The last piece of this puzzle is that communication. You can do it through the platforms, places like Fiverr and Upper. They allow you to communicate with these people, even though you don't own that information. But as you grow through your own personal auditioning outside of those platforms, you're also going to curate that information and you're going to contact them as well. All right. So here's the deal. When is your moment going to be? That you're, when is your moment on your floor in your living room going to be where you refuse to move and figure it out? You know, is that moment now for you? Okay, make the decision now to figure it out. There is no shortcut, but you find that it is so satisfying when you figure it out. These things I've talked to you about today will help you figure it out. But push yourself to the limit. Don't leave that floor right of your living room until you do thank you guys for watching if this was interesting to you hit that subscribe button also if you want some help on moving that journey forward a little bit faster on that living room floor check out the link below to avio's journey elite academy we'd love to have you it's a place where we help you start and grow and blow up your voiceover business so thank you guys for watching have a wonderful day goodbye goodbye